This is a tutorial on how to put together the cat pattern that the first graders are working on um, from three knitted pieces. Um, you're going to have one that's 20 by, well, 20 inch, uh, 20 stitches and knit until it's square. You should be able to fold it corner to corner and have the edges meet in a triangle there. Your next piece is going to be, I like to do 11 stitches, but 10 is fine also. And same thing, you want to knit it until it's a square. The last piece is going to be a rectangle. And I cast on four stitches. And you can make it as long as your child, but they can knit as long as they want the tail to be. This is gonna be the tail. So for this, you're going to need your three pieces of knitting, some kind of a needle, um, this is a darning needle, but you could use a regular needle as well. Um, the nice thing about a darning needle is it has this big eye, <clears throat> so you can thread yarn through it. But if you don't have a darning needle, you can use a regular needle and thread. You're also going to need a pair of scissors and some wool stuffing. We're going to start with the body. So I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to, I, I like to use, um, I like to leave long tails when I cast off so I just use that yarn. But if you don't have a long, ca a long tail, you may just thread a new piece of yarn. So <clears throat> this piece is going to be the body. The goal is to fold each of the corners. We're going to stitch from here to here, from here, or from here to here, and then probably back up this way. And the same on the other side. Those are going to be the paws of your little kitty. So I'm just going to fold this in half. And stitch it. You can use a whip stitch, that's fine. If you're using, um, my recommendation would be to use thread or yarn that is the same color as your work. That way it won't show. And make sure, a lot of times when the kids are sewing this, their yarn ends up wrapped around the foot and that makes it harder to stuff. So try to make sure that your yarn stays along this edge here. And I can't totally see my screen, so forgive me if I get out of the field of view. I am absolutely a novice at filming things like this. So once you get down here, you you're, see I'm trying to make it halfway. Um, so I've gotten this far. Now I'm just going to fold this little foot and I'm going to go back up the other way. Alright, so now we've gotten to the end. And when you're doing a knot, I like to do three stitches in the same place, or maybe even four. And then I'm going to try and run back through the center of those stitches that I just did. And then I like to hide my yarn on the inside. And I'll turn it. And now we're going to do the other feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah? It's a little hat. That's why you put your head in here at a little point. That is a funny little hat. Um, for starting yarn, 
Remember to hide your tail on the inside, but then I like to do the same thing. I do three stitches in the same place. And that's a nice way to make sure that your yarn will stay attached and you don't have to worry about um, if you sometimes you like to do a people like to do a knot at the end of their work and try to hide that on the inside. But especially with knitting with the holes in the knitting, just from the way the knit fabric is, those those knots sometimes pull through. So this is more of a sure bet to make sure it stays attached. And I'm just gonna do my little whip stitch here, stitch up this little kitty's leg. And then you're gonna look for the halfway point. Not quite there yet. Um, this is kind of a small opening. Do make sure you have room in the middle here because we are going to stuff it. And actually, I have this little piece on the end here. I'm actually just going to tuck that inside. That's fine to tuck it inside. If I were to trim it close up, there's a chance it would come unknotted and then the work might unravel. Although now I've got a very short tail, which is gonna be hard to knot. Try not to leave such a short tail. <laughs> Your children are probably going to play pretty hard with these kitties. So I like to try to make sure they're sewn up pretty tightly, but it doesn't always work. All right, so you're going to take some little bits of wool and kind of fluff it up. What do you want, Can I stuff it? You want to stuff it? My assistant here is going to stuff. Okay, so Yoen, go ahead and stuff a little bit into each toe. Do you want to come and sit by the back on the back side here? This works. Okay. And I like to stuff the toes first because if you just shove a big wad of wool in there to stuff the legs, it doesn't always go into the toes. Can you move it back a little bit this way? We're going to try and leave it underneath the camera. Thanks. We have some in each toe now? In each toe, but not in each leg. Okay, so now that the toes are stuffed, we're gonna, do you see how I'm separating the wool? If you have a longer fiber of wool, um, it's nice to separate it, it gets more lofty. Um, I think most of what I sent home is a much shorter staple, so you can still kind of pull it apart and make it lofty, but you shouldn't have too much. All the legs are stuffed. Alright. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Oops. Fingers. Stop doing me fingers. I think that's good. And once your kitty is stuffed all the way, you're gonna thread another piece of yarn and we're gonna sew him closed. So you can hide your end on the inside and do those three stitches.
And then we're going to sew him up. For this one, I kind of like to go back and forth. The whip stitch here would be a little more obvious. 